Good morning students today i am going to begin with a poem marshlands composed by emily pollin johnson before i read the poem and explain it to you let us know more about the poetess on the screen you can see the picture of emily pollin johnson she was a canadian poet author and performer who was popular in the late 19th and 20th centuries she was born on 10th of march 1861 her notable works are the white wampum canadian born flint and feather she died on 7th of march 1913 johnson's poetry often uses the tone and structure of english poetry to convey nature legends and benefits with a dramatic intensity well matched to the stage she paints a romanticized picture of the array of life residing in a marshland as night approaches casts the ecosystem into silence children it's a very beautiful poem marshlands means swamp land or slough you will come to know more about it and as i say marshlands you might have a negative picture in your mind but emily paulin johnson brings a different kind of picture in her readers mind let me read the poem for you marshlands a thin wet sky that yellows at the rim and meets with sun lost lip the marshes brim the pool low lying dank with moss and mold glint through their mildews like large cups of gold among the wild rice in the still lagoon in monotone the lizard shrills his tune the wild goose homing seeks a sheltering where rushes grow and oozing lichens cling late cranes with heavy wing and lazy flight sail up the silence with the nearing night and like a spirit swat in some soft wail steals to light and its shadows over the swale hushed lie the sedges and the vapors creep thick gray and humid while the marshes sleep the analysis of the poem this poem marshlands is composed by emily paulin johnson is a 14 line poem that is divided into seven couplets couplets in hindi you call doha it is possible to consider this piece as a sonnet due to its rhyme and rhythm schemes and the number of lines there are 14 lines but seven couplets the couplet rhyme perfectly confirming the poem to a pattern of a a b b c c d d e e f f and g g this pattern along with the rhyme scheme gives the poem a steady lulling rhythm which helps to emphasize the peaceful and romanticized picture of the marshlands you can see children the first line's last word rim is rhyming with brim whereas the third line's last word mold is rhyming with the fourth line's last word gold and so on so we have 14 lines but how many couplets seven couplets are there now let us see the summary of the poem The poem begins with a speaker stating that the sky versus the land is thin and wet. It is very likely that a storm 
could come and drench the land at any time. This is a constant possibility in the marshes, means in the swamp lands. Amongst all of the reeds, moss and darkened corners of the land, there are cranes, geese and lizards. These creatures represent the wider area of animals and organic life that lives in an area that is generally distasteful to many onlookers. Onlookers means the people, those who go to these kinds of places to visit. We do not like it. Johnson's speaker tracks the comings and goings of these animals and the functions. The plants play as night approaches. It brings with it a heavy silence that falls over the land and will remain until the next day. Now, line-wise explanation. I'm going to explain you the first four lines explanation. As you can see, the meaning of marshlands already I told you, swamplands or slough. S-L-O-U-G-H is pronounced as slough. A thin wet sky that yellows at the rim and meets the, with sun-lost lip the marshes brim. The pools low-lying, dank with moss and mold, glint through their mildews like large cups of gold. The first line describes the sky that looks down over top of the marshes. It is thin and wet, as if at any moment it could break open with heavy rain and storm. The edges of the blue-gray sky are tinged with yellow. Yellow color you can see at the corners of the sky where it meets with the land is of yellow color. The color runs around the rim and ends where the sun has dipped down below the brim. Means talking about the horizon where the sky seems to meet the overflowing marshlands. Therefore, a reader is now aware, reader means you are now aware that the sun has almost vanished, disappeared from the sky and it appears as if a storm is about to drench or wet the land. In the second line, the marsh is described as having lip and brim. The ecosystem within it is contained. It remains inside this enclosed area while the rest of the world operates differently. Differently means we move from here and there to visit different places. But as onlookers, we do not want to go to these kinds of marshlands or swamp lands. The next two lines, couplets, describe the pools that make up most of the floor of the marsh. They are low in the ground and filled with moss and mold. You might have learned moss and mold in biology. These areas are not pleasant, at least to those who do not naturally live within the area. While they might be dank, means wet, clammy or cold, they are also clearly fertile, means the marshlands are fertile. We can see in these types of areas that plants grow heartily within and around the waters. Emily says that water shines from within the layer of large pieces of moss or fungi which appears like large cups of gold. Now let's see lines 5, 6, 7 and 8. Students, you can see the different perception of Emily. She is bringing 
the beautiful uh, giving the beautiful narration of these kinds of places where people human beings would not like to go and visit let's see the poem among the wild rice in the still lagoon in monotone the lizard shrills his tune the wild goose homing seeks a sheltering where rushes grow and oozing lichens cling l i c h e n s pronounced as lichens in line 5 and 6 emily wants to describe the wild rice that is growing on the undisturbed coastal areas here the speaker refers to the marshland as containing a still lagoon the water of lagoon is stagnant means still but as previously stated that does not mean there isn't life that means that means emily is talking about life which we can see in these kinds of places emily tells her readers that these types of areas also contain life and beauty she men- mentions a lizard and it's unchanging unpleasant sharp sound to complete the environment she is not frightened of the lizard and calls the sharp cries tunes of the lizard as being musical in nature mostly we are frightened of lizards but emily is not frightened rather she is telling that the cries of this little creature is very beautiful wonderful to listen at late evening or night time the thus she is telling it is musical in nature these small pieces of information help a reader to visualize what this place is like while narrating the reality of the marshlands and life in and around them these details are of importance next in line 7 and 8 she describes another animal that is the wild goose it is homing means hiding the creature is single minded to seek shelter after a long journey the wild goose knows that somewhere in amongst the rushes rushes means which are the long blades of grass bull rushes also we say and the oozing lichens there is somewhere it can rest who can rest the wild goose can rest oozing means flowing and lichen means slow growing plants which have spread on the marshlands generally we call creepers so the wild goose knows where to go and hide and take a rest after its long journey children from these first eight lines one should have a clear picture of how the marshlands are important to both plants and animals if it is not important for human beings surely it is important to both plants and animals these places may be hated by most of the human beings by us but they are very useful and helpful for different kinds of creatures they are surely homes to a great variety of species which are only described in the final six lines of the poem so students today we have seen the first eight lines of the poem your homework you have to go through the complete poem learn the very first eight lines of the poem tomorrow i'll send another video 
where the last six lines will be explained. Thank you. Take care.